A city that's the center of industry, commerce, and recreation for more than a million and a half people. That city, Oakland, California. Half surrounded by one of the world's great bays, the area is undergoing vast changes and improvements. As, it As the final the team selected for the original American Football League, the Raiders were a poor stepchild from the start. With no home to call their own, they were forced to play across the bay in San Francisco sharing Candlestick Park and Kizar Stadium, while crowds flocked to see the 49ers of the established NFL. Few lined up to see the upstart Raiders. Short on talent and fans, the Raiders lost games and money at an alarming rate. On the verge of bankruptcy, Original owner Wayne Valley went to his fellow owners for help. $400,000 from Buffalo Bills owner Ralph Wilson not only saved the Raiders, but the AFL as well, which couldn't survive with just seven teams. So the Raiders fled the playing fields in San Francisco when the Oakland City Fathers agreed to provide a temporary no-frills facility. Frank, you'll fill it up in Oakland. I mean, come on, that thing, you know, if they ever had the wave in those days, that whole thing would have come down. I swear to God, it's the worst looking mess ever. So, played in an erector set. It was, it was terrible. Frank Ufiel was named after an undertaker in Oakland. And I hope that it is true because it adds to everything else that was going on at that time uh, in, the, in the American Football League because everybody was trying to bury them. There's no question about it. And they just kept coming back to life. Despite the fanfare, the Raiders' first season in Oakland yielded just one win. They were the worst team in football, a herd of scattered failures. But... Tommy Flores, quarterback from the University of Pacific. With a 17-yard strike, Flores to rookie end Tom Mitchell. And now Flores to Billy Cannon, getting 41 down to the Chargers 7. And it was Flores once again to the air to hit Powell for the score. The Flores-Powell combination got things going once more, this time with a 36-yard play. Billy Cannon is the Flores target this time to the three-yard line. Dixon gets the call, and he piled in for the score. It was Daniels to catch the Flores pass in the end zone. Another score as the Raiders went on to defeat San Diego 41-19. The Raiders' 1966 passing game accounted for 26 touchdowns with quarterback Tom Flores, number 15 from Pacific. The Oakland record read eight victories, five defeats, and one tie. A mark good for second place in the AFL's Western Division. The success of the Raider passing game was a big reason why. The Raiders had lost in Oakland thanks to personal heroics by the Chargers superstar Lance Allworth. The opportunity for revenge came on a beautiful November day in San Diego. Just two plays into the game, Flores hit Daniels for 68 yards to the Charger 10. And as seen in slow motion, a Flores to Art Powell pass got the touchdown. Thanks to the miracle of instant replay, let's take another look. And a subsequent 31-yard Tom Flores scoring pass to Art Powell, the Raiders trail 21 to 17 with slightly more than two minutes to play. With that two minutes plus remaining and working from his own 16, Flores hit Dixon on a crucial third down play for 12 yards and a first down.
Once more, it was third down when he fired to Art Powell on a thrust of 42 yards. And then it was a Flores to Dixon shot to get the Raider team all the way down to the New York one. Recognized as the brightest young mind in the game, Al Davis took this shaky foundation of a team and constructed an immediate winner. From 1 and 13 the year before to 10 and 4. I had a dream that someday I would build the finest organization in professional sport. I had certain philosophies of my own, and that was, number one, what I call the vertical game. We were going to stretch the field vertically. When we came out of the huddle, we weren't looking for first downs. We didn't want to move the chains. We wanted touchdowns. It's number one to say you want to do that. It's number two to say that you have the players to do it, but it's number three to do it. Men at you on top, and they've got the speed to do it, and they will do it. That was rate of football. What Davis designed was not a reckless use of the bomb, but a controlled, disciplined means of getting the long ball into the end zone. Al Davis provided an environment for both success and brotherhood. Raiders in Oakland were committed to one another, and together they braced themselves for a long and wild ride. We did not come to Oakland and the East Bay for the sake of a job. We came because we believe in the future of this team and the future of this area. My enthusiasm has not diminished for the job in the years to come. And I hope your enthusiasm will continue. And come what may, be proud too that you are a vital part of the progress of this football team. Pastor Rini broke his leg against Kansas City. We had gotten off to an awful start that year. We felt our backs were against the wall and we had to try to pull it out. Enter Jim Plunkett. Despite languishing on the bench for two years, his leadership skills were obvious. He came into the huddle with such poise, with such coolness, and with such confidence that he could do it. And you could feel that, and we did it. In a remarkable run, the once struggling Raiders earned a playoff berth by winning 9 of 11, with Plunkett regaining his old form each step of the way. As he got his physical and mental strength back, you could see that there was something special. And our football team could feel it. He had a lot of what Kenny Stabler had, the ability to make other people play better. The ability to get his teammates to be willing to lay their lives down. He was just nonchalant. He just thought that was the way it should be. We'll just beat him, whatever we have to do. We'll... And that's what the great ones have. The great ones have that sense of, we know what we have to do. We'll just go out and do it. It all starts this week, one game, one game, and one game. All you got to do is win. You lose, you go home. We're going to the Super Bowl in 1908. The Raiders celebrated their return to the playoffs by pummeling the Oilers in the first round. A week later in Cleveland. The weather... It is brutal beyond belief. The Raiders proved fiercer than even the sub-zero wind chill. Clinging to a two-point lead late in the fourth quarter, Oakland refused to yield. The Browns appear to be in the driver's seat. Sipe is going back to pass, wants to take a shot into the end zone. He looks, he throws, and it's a great play that may have been intercepted, and the Cleveland Browns call the chutzpah once too often. The chutzpah was all Oakland's. A team that had been considered and also ran before the season began was headed to the AFC Championship game. And though no wildcard team had ever advanced to the Super Bowl, Oakland was undaunted. Their confidence proved well-founded. begins. 
The Raiders are bound for the Super Bowl for the third time. Climaxing one of the great stories in football in recent years. The total resurgence of the silver and black. New Orleans, here come the Raiders. I can't believe it. It's like a dream come true. It's unbelievable. Yes, and we're going to win. The Raiders entered Super Bowl 15 on a roll and supremely confident. Rance to the left against Edwards. Chandler to the right. Plunkett on a straight drop back. Here comes the rush. Steps up. Can't find anybody else. Sits up running to the left. Rolls on the move. And it's caught by 10 at the 40. Can't catch up to the football. He'll go all the way. Nobody knows. To the 20. To the 10. To the 4. Touchdown Raiders. Back is Plunkett. Time to throw. Deep to the end zone to Branch. It is caught by Greenwich. Touchdown Raiders. While Jim Plunkett's three touchdown passes earned him MVP honors, Rod Martin earned a place in the record book by intercepting three passes. Sets up really deep. Now it comes up the middle. Picked off. Rod Martin, the third time to And Rod Martin once again slams the door in the face of the man they call Jaws, a sort of fitting symbol. Silver and black football is king of the hill of the National Football League. Jim Plunkett, climaxing his greater comeback as sports has ever witnessed. This was our finest hour. This was the finest hour in the history of the Oakland Raiders. To Tom Flores, the coaches, and the great athletes, you were magnificent out there today. You really are. And take pride and be proud. Your commitment to excellence and your will to win will endure forever. You will magnify. In 1982, the Raiders moved to Los Angeles, but the change of venue didn't change the Raiders' philosophy. That commitment to excellence thing that he coined years and years ago, I see now as corporate mottos, but that meant something. Nobody approached it that way. He approached it like it was a war, like it was us against them. And now everybody says that. That martial mentality means the Raiders never surrender, no matter how dire the situation. And in 1982, the Silver and Black's uncanny ability to rescue victory from defeat helped them to the league's best record. A week after beating the Chiefs, the Raiders met their new crosstown rivals. But while the Rams held a lead in the game's final minute, they couldn't stop the NFL's Rookie of the Year. Marcus Allen's emergence as the league's most dangerous runner helped the Raiders to the 1982 playoffs. But while he was a breakaway threat, the Raiders weren't breaking from the past. Potent and pugnacious, they didn't just have a hair-trigger temper, they were just a hair from reclaiming their title as the most dominant team in the game. And in 1983, they did reclaim it with Abandon, Braun, and Brio. 83 was a much different football team than 80, 1980. Uh, we were better in almost every facet of the game. Uh, you know, Marcus Allen had joined us in 82, so we had a tremendous running attack with him. Todd Christensen was emerging as a real fine tight end. Our defense with Howie Long and Lyle Alcedo, Greg Townsend, Matt Millen, uh, heading up the linebacker core along with uh, Rod Martin was just stupendous. We were darn good. You know, we scored on everybody. We were, it was the best team in about the nine, ten years I played with the Raiders that we had. En route to the 10th AFC West title, the Raiders' high-octane offense was as imaginative as it was unstoppable. And in the first round of the playoffs, a record crowd of more than 90,000 watched the Raiders demolish the Steelers. Beating the Steelers was sweet. Sweeter still was the whipping they gave the Seahawks the following week in the AFC Championship game. The Raiders were headed back to the Super Bowl. Tom Flores' team swaggered in and immediately staggered the defending champion Redskins. He's going to have the wind at his back. High snap, he goes up, block. It's going to be blocked into the end zone. The Raiders on a chase. It'll be recovered in the end zone. It'll be recovered for a Raider touchdown. Lightning has struck wearing black and silver. The bolts kept coming. 
as the Raiders simply went where they wanted and took what they liked. Let's keep dominating this team. Let's keep dominating. Keep dominating. That's right. Let's abuse it. Let's abuse it. The domination was so complete that by halftime, the outcome was no longer in doubt. Seisman back, looks out to the left, and he fires it out there. Intercepted! Jack Scarlett! Touchdown, Raiders! I don't believe it! Holy Toledo! A screen pass, and they looked like they knew it was coming. Man ran right for it. I guarantee they looked like they knew that play was coming. We got 30 minutes of Raider football, baby. 30 minutes of Raider football, and it's all ours. No let up. No let up. Let's go. There was no let up. Instead, Raider football reigned over the Redskins in a maelstrom of muscle and menace. It was a bravura performance the most one-sided Super Bowl to date, capped by the record-setting performance of Marcus Allen. Bucket giving to Allen, sent him the wide left. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets away for a moment. Come back up to the middle of 30, 35, 30. First pass, two men at the 50, down to the 40. Hit the double blocker, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Raiders! Holy Toledo! Allen's 74-yard touchdown run remains the Super Bowl's longest. Few teams have ever won a title more easily, and no team ever enjoyed it more. With all the great teams we've had, I think today that this organization, this team, this coaching staff dominated so decisively that two things must be said. Not only, in my opinion, are you the greatest rated team of all time, Thank you. I think you're ranked with the great teams Thank of all time that have ever played any professional sport. We probably go down there and then in there. I think Tom is so laid back, though. I don't think we're going to be able to make him cry. I heard the big bang in the door, and it's a little bar. Doesn't that doorbell work? I thought, who the devil is that? You know, nobody comes on Sunday unless we invite him for dinner. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh. Can you bring Coach on out with I you? I sure will. I'll be right back. I thought, something's happening. I was kind of afraid to even think about it, because the last time we saw David, he, he, he came to the door and said Tom didn't make it. Can you come to the door, please? That's great. She said it's some people that want to see it. Thought maybe they were delivering some beer or something, because that's, I'm waiting for a shipment of my beer with my picture on the can. Coach, come on out here for a second, would you? When I looked at the door, and this big person took up a whole door, and I said, oh my God, then I realized this could be it. Coach, I got something to say to you, okay? Yeah. On behalf of all of us who love this game, on behalf of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I want to thank you so much for all you've done for the game. And I want to welcome you to Canton, Ohio, as a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I promise you, Coach, that we are going to guard your legacy forever. Thank you. The guy who has my job 100 day bakers from now will be telling the story not only of the great player and coach that you are but also of the man that you are i appreciate it thank you so much this is big <laughs> yeah. lost i'm using that lost for words but, <laughs> but coach you've meant so much to the game and there's so many people who love you and look up to you and i know this has been a long long journey <laughs> He's just really touched and really excited about this. When you think about it, you know, he started out in 1960, and that's a long time ago. And then to have this be the culmination of all those years of football is like the icing on the cake and the cherry on top. <laughs> you don't even think about these things as you're growing up. Who ever thought there was a you know, Hall of Fame? What was the Hall of Fame when I was a kid? You know, vineyards and Sanger, California. And here I am, I went in with my friends and peers, my relatives, yeah. my family, my Raider family, and my Raider Nation family. Big. The Raider Nation has been 
marvelous, uh, the Raider family, equally marvelous and supportive. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have gotten this far. My life is complete now. I'm not ready to cut a check out yet, but my life is complete. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'll tell Mark. you what, Coach. Uh, this isn't the end of your football journey. No, this no. is the start of a whole new journey. Yeah. And I think you're going to look awfully good in gold. You know, as much as we have I don't know. Silver I think black. we're going to change the color of the silver and black. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll look silver. I'll look silver and black head right here. Uh, Raider Nation, just be proud that we've made it. And I emphasize we've made it. Just be proud. And I'm proud to be your representative. Just win. Play hard. Try not to make mistakes. But don't worry about mistakes because there's only one thing that counts, just win.